What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the second episode of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast, Broguecast. I'm here with Dirt Lord. I'm here with Coe Reed. I'm here with Garbo. And I'm here with Griffin. <laughs> yes. I'm clapping. Yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> yeah nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Um, so before we jump into like the news topics of the week, I wanted to address a YouTube comment that I got from Mr. Will Murphy, right? And he said, I have three things to say as of getting about 15 minutes into the video. This was on the previous broadcast video. Uh, one is that you guys missed something in the update show that you're still only going to be able to queue with four people, even when playing 6v6 King of the Hill. Now, if that, that was in the update, I completely glossed over it, and that sounds stupid. Why would they put a 6v6 mode in the game if you can't queue with six people? I figured the whole point to do the 6v6 is to bring over those crews of six that play Call of Duty in the other games. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. And then now they're going to restrict it to four people queuing, so... Maybe they should fix that before the game goes or the update goes live. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, now I don't even want to play it. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, I'm curious if you guys play demo pubs or ranked when I see you playing demolition. So we play pubs right now. I am thinking about just going straight ranked so that we can ban people that um, is not properly balanced. Within Lancer. The game. Yeah, we'll just yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, third is how does a guy get a chance to get in a game in on y'all's games? Because you guys seem chill and fun, and I love to join y'all sometimes. So just send me a friend request on Rogue Company, and then reply to a comment. And let me know what your in-game name is. If you don't want to do it on YouTube or anything like that, just DM me on Twitter because. I get a lot of requests and not from people that watch the videos. I just get a lot of return requests, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I log on and I've got a bunch of requests and it looks like somebody I've either played with or against, then I'm just going to go through and delete all of them. So if anybody wants to play with us, just DM me or comment your uh, username in Rogue Company, and I either I'll send you a friend request or I'll accept your friend request. And then one night whenever we've only got three people playing or whatever, uh, if you're online, I'll send you an invite and we'll get you in a game. All right, so let's transition over. So basically, the, uh, this week in Rogue Company that came out on June 25th, they announced the AFK Lever Deserter um, changes that they're going to be making to the game, and it's in two phases. So the first phase, they're going to backfill it with bots, which may have already been happening mm -hmm. you know un unconfirmed Possibly. yeah unconfirmed, but may have yeah. Yeah, but may have already been happening but the second phase of it is a join in progress uh system and i've watched this video many times and this is all i'm going to say about it we don't have enough information specifically for phase two because phase one is pretty well fleshed out but for phase two we don't have enough information to be able to take that and run with it they to me they released that information prematurely and because it leads to more questions than it answers anything like if we join if we queue up is it going to backfill us automatically are we going to have the option to join matches in progress how is it going to work whenever you join a match in progress are you going to be able to choose your character are you going to fill for someone that left the game are you going to have money to spend is the bot going to purchase things like there's a lot of stuff in the game that we don't know the real answers to and that leads to more questions in the long run so why release this information now why not release this information whenever you do the season three update that that's it because I've got so many more questions now cuz I don't I don't want to be thrown into a game where shit's already been purchased for me Hell and we're no. and we're down fucking 27. Yeah, yeah you're losing already. Exactly. Yeah. My question is what if you go AFK and you're trying to get back in the game but it backfills somebody else in your stead before you can get back? Oh. E exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and like, let's and it, go ahead. You know, mine's about a different thing. Keep going. Well, and that leads to the question. It's like, if something was to happen and your internet drops and you leave the game, you get everything rebooted up, you're ready to join the game back. Like Justin just said, somebody backfills into that position. Are you still going to get a deserter penalty? I mean, there. it seems like they have some sort of 
analysis already on it, or they would never would have brought up Phase Two. <clears throat> so yeah, they've well, had to have been playing with bots. I feel like somewhere, you know, yeah. and then like the whole level of them, like I don't know, like how well, they even have the idea of them like being on the same level as the person that even well, goes yeah, AFK. How? Well, that's that's my question ab- about the bots. Is what what do they mean scale according to level? Does that mean scale according to what they've done in this match, or uh, according to their statistics or overall? Overall playing, yeah. Yeah, and like, how would because you even? How do you those even? Those are two rate very that? different things. How does that work? Yeah, how do you rate that person's like? Like, are they going to shoot exactly how I shoot? Because yeah. that's make embarrassing your plays. sometimes. Yeah, they're going to make my plays. Yeah, like, are they going to one moment? No have one a, can a be a target like IQ? me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that bot might outdo you, man. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, even move. I don't know. It's just there. At least I'm a uh, I'm a target that can kind of get away sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is like classic rogue company, classic high res. We're just going to spoon feed you the smallest amount of information that we possibly can. And then basically leave the community up to speculate and run with it. And really from what I've seen online, nobody has really commented too heavily on the backfill and ask any questions about it. And that was my whole thing is, and someone even commented on the YouTube video that I made. It's like, well, um, why? Like, what does it matter about the details? And I'm like, what well, matters is because they publicly came out and said something about it. All they had to do was leave it at uh, the update, the Switchblade update. Yes, we're going to be adding bots into the game. We're going to release something at a later date. They could have released that stuff at a later date whenever the Switchblade update happened. They could have been like, okay, yeah. we've got everything fleshed out for Phase 1 and 2. Phase 1 st- has started with the Switchblade update. Phase 2 is going to start with Season 3 update. And this is how it's going to work. This is how the purchases are going to work. The rogue selection is going to work. How the bot AI actually does work and the statistics that it pulls. Because we knew we know that there's already bots in the game. We can just go ahead and yeah, say I'm, that. Yeah. So I, I, Seems that way. Yeah. So with with that information that we already have and them saying that bots will be introduced with Switchblade, they hurriedly released this information when they really didn't need to. Once again, I feel like they didn't answer any of the community's questions and then they just left us with more questions. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) in a way, if it feels like they don't, they don't think they're, player base is intelligent at all yeah because there's just like here's some shiny shit look at it yeah and but but this is the thing is is anyone who enjoys the game and understands the mechanics of the game and i mean like the real mechanics of the game are going to have these questions yeah and and i just wish they they understood that we're going to be like this. So they it either, either don't give us a portion of what, you know, wait until you've got it all flushed out before you tell us about it or give us more information. Yeah. Put some Which of this shit or even just ask the community, Hey man, what are your concerns about this? Yeah. Why don't they listen to the community? Why is it always the bigger streamers and stuff that matter? And then they, you know, they just turn well, a leaf any point in time, go somewhere else. It's easier to get the opinion of one guy who who thinks that he or or it seems that he or she represents the community as opposed to asking the community as a whole. Yeah. Exactly. But then we have moments like where Lancer's like, oh Lancer needs a buff when Lancer doesn't need a buff. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah, I know. I mean that, Yeah, that's what happens. Like they end up like, oh well, this all the big streamers say that Lancer's shit. They need a buff. She I mean, needs, she's her all guns right, not good enough. but she could be better. Right, yeah. you know? I mean, she's just the example because, I mean, Lancer's obviously the OP character in the game, like, no matter what. But, like, again, she's just the one that's used. And yeah. They just shit, I don't know, man. It's, just, it's frustrating. It, it very much is. Um. So... The next topic we wanted to hit was on June 26th, Gandhi tweeted out from his personal account, by the way, uh, what's one thing you'd like to see changed or added to strikeout or demolition, ranked included? Now, there are tons and tons and tons of comments on here, 235 comments on this to be exact. And whenever you break it down, uh, a lot of people are saying pretty much the same thing. They want a more rewarding rank system. They want uh, a lot of the bugs and inconsistencies 
inconsistencies within the matches to actually be addressed and fixed. And then uh, some people are wanting like um, like a theater mode where you can go back and rewatch the plays, yeah. uh, things like that. Um, Paladins had it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I left a comment on here because why not? And uh, what I said was a true draft phase for ranked, uh, which would mean when you pick glitch that nobody else can put, pick glitch on the enemy team. Um, the oh. ability, yeah, the ability. I like to, that. Well, and that's the way that you know mm. most ranked systems work. You have bands, and then if you pick a specific character, then that character is no longer in play. Yeah, so. It it turn it turns into a chess match about your actual team comp and who counters what as opposed to well it's okay they didn't ban this person so I can also pick this other person up they are going to have to add more supports into the game they are going to have to add a couple of more positional characters so like you've got duelist you know you've got breacher and all this kind of stuff you're going to have to fill that roster out a little bit more but once I think once they get enough supports in there to where it could survive the ban phase and the draft phase where you still have an option as a support then they could go ahead and make this happen right now in my opinion the ability to see who the other team was selecting for demolition so you could choose counters based off of team comp. And this really boils down to glitch. You never want to play glitch until you need glitch. Um, this is a big one. A lot of people have commented this This is a uh, as a solution to fix a lot of the problems. Uh, map, vote, or ban system. I, mean, I do feel there needs to be I'm good with a, that. some sort of vote system for the maps. I do feel that because like even the randomization, like we could be randomized on the same map like four times. You remember when we did that one glacier is like yeah randomized to the same map like five times. And it's supposed to be our least favorite fucking map. Yeah, yeah, and it stuck as it like why can't we get the option of like we see the two maps and we're like fuck glacier. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like that idea. The last thing that I said was uh, some way to uh, share the economy. Uh, between the players, between the people that are on your team, because, and uh, someone even commented on it. I think uh, ninety six commented on it to where it would be cool if there was a rogue in the game that had um, either a passive ability or an active ability to where they could share their economy with their team. And he made a lot of good oh. points because he he said something about it on one of his videos when he covered this topic, and he said, "Okay, so what if you take all of your money together?" round one which is pistol rounds and you give it to one specific rogue and they go in and they buy their weapon so they're the only person you know in the match in theory that actually has their primary weapon well of course you there would have to be balances around this you would have to make it to where you can only transfer x amount of money or you can purchase things specifically for them kind of like you can in valorant but you would have to balance it in a way where it wasn't OP. But I just wanted to hit at this because there's a lot of comments on here and there's a lot of a lot of people are thinking very similarly. There's not a lot of people that's realistically thinking outside the box on here. Most of it is the same stuff. You know, six rounds instead of eight rounds. Extraction ranked. You know, better rewards for players in ranked. You know, teammate health bars. Things that we've kind of been saying for a long time that either hasn't been added into the game yet or, you know, that, that could easily be done. Uh, next up, same person from personal Twitter account. Give me your th top three issues in Rogue Company. So um, a lot of people are saying, like this guy right here, playability, inconsistent TTK, content creator ability to grow with his game. It's hard to want to play again after a painfully long, repetitive match. Character meta makes so many unu so many unusable and, again, affects playability only getting behind already established streamers. That's what he said. Uh, a lot of people are saying matchmaking. Melee weapons are still being brought up. Uh, aim assist bugs are still being brought up. It's, it's a lot of stuff that... A lot of bugs and a lot of inconsistencies within the game. So, of course, I commented on this as well. So, the server issues. Higher tick rate servers would be helpful with making matches make sense. I think that a lot of the issues that they currently have within Rogue Company could be probably fixed if they had better servers. Mm -hmm. That's just my thought process on it. Because if you had better 
servers with a better tick rate on there than like if you throw a grenade and you're expecting to, expecting the incendiary grenade to explode at a certain time whenever it hits well if this you know depending on your ping and how the server tick rates going it may be delayed it may throw your play off you know it may yeah. cause inconsistencies when you're shooting someone whenever they're not moving and you're aiming at them and shooting them and you're not getting any hit markers or you're getting hit markers, but it's not taking damage away from them. There's a lot of problems with the servers and nobody's really talking about that. Everybody's talking about matchmaking, you know, matchmaking's a problem. Matchmaking's a problem. Well, yes, at the end of the day, matchmaking is a problem, right? Because we get paired up with people all across the spectrum of, of, of levels. And it doesn't make any sense when we can go neck and neck with a team with like four level 300s on it and just get completely blown away by a team where nobody's over level 25. Mm -hmm. So, so the matchmaking is screwed up, but I think that if you would fix a lot of the server issues, then that would cause a lot of the bugs and inconsistencies within the matches themselves to actually go away. Matchmaking I put on there and then cover like how aggravating is it to, to try to play around cover in this game? Some covers nice, and then some covers is absolute shit. Garbo. Yeah, for yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, if, if mm. the roll mechanic and the crouch mechanic, and I don't know if this has to do with ping, I don't know if this has to do with the server, or if it's an actual bug, but whenever I roll and I press the crouch button, and then I crouch for a second and stand up, mm -hmm. that's, mm. that's not the way that's what intended. Yeah, exactly. If I'm behind cover... And I press the button to make me stand up and I don't stand up. So I press the space bar to stand up and then I jump. I go from a crouch position yeah. to a jump, jumping out of cover and I get yeah. down. That's not supposed to happen. Or you jump on top of it. Yeah. That's like, yeah. That's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. There's so many walls in the game where if you walk up behind the wall, you press the crouch button and you press the, the crouch button again to stand up, it will literally not stand you up until you move away from the cover. Like there's an invisible wall above you that's yeah. stopping you. It does that shit to me all the time and it fucking pisses me off, dude. Yes, that should not be like, happening. Like, why can't I stand up? Yes, yes. That, that should not be happening ever. Whenever you're a tactical third-person shooter that has cover mechanics in the game, the cover shouldn't feel like it hinders you. It should help you. That's been a bug in it for a minute that's been so frustrating because timing is everything in this game. Yeah. yeah. And if, you, if you're trying to get some shots off that could definitely down a dude and you just can't stand up, yeah, it makes me want to throw my fucking controller through my TV, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're looking around like, what the fuck am I stuck on? Yeah, for real. Oh, I gotta back up. Now I'm fucking getting shot in the head. Yeah. Now I'm dead. They need a team that's just dedicated to finding and fixing bugs because, you know, every update that comes out, there's bugs. Look at COD, you know, look at Paladins, look at look at any major game. Valorant, anytime one of these games is released, whenever there's an update, something breaks that they can't account for. It's always going to happen. But if you have someone that's on it and they can hot fix it, like we've seen hot fixes come within eight hours or four hours of the actual update going live. That mm -hmm. needs that needs to happen more consistently. They need to figure out why these problems are happening and patch them as quickly as possible. And they need well, to. Hey, to oh, go ahead. You got to report it. Yeah, I know. You got to report those servers. Yeah. Oh, whenever I get stuck behind cover, I do it every time. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever the, the match, know. yeah. Whenever the match starts lagging out, I report the server. I mean, I report the server all the time for any kind of problems, and hopefully, we'll get into a state to where they're actually going to fix some of this stuff. I think the aim assist issue is like again, Corey doesn't even feel the aim assist, but to me, I feel like the whole aim assist issue is like they have it when it comes down to controllers, obviously, because PC. I don't think it has aim assist at all. <clears throat> no any form so when it comes down to the controllers i feel like the guns that are being used have different aim assist and the only reason i say that is because for example Ronin, ronin's and scorch's smg i do not know why but like every time that i go to choose that weapon and use it it has a pull on its own sometimes when i go to shoot and so like i just let it kind of like do its own thing for me for some of my stuff and like aim assist kind of does that sometimes kind of like a god but like a lot of 
controller players don't realize it because again it's a thumbstick and they don't mess with like every little thing and so <clears throat> when they go to use their thumb and you, you know they're jerking it back and forth. I mean y'all seen like some of my camera plays where I've fucking just like whiff shots. You've seen <laughs> all of my camera plays. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying like I feel like their aim assist should just be like one set aim assist for all guns. Because again to me I feel like they're different because they are because like when Dallas's aim assist is long, but then, like I said, when I use Scorch or Ronin, it's really close. Like it's, it's just a different set for him. I feel right. Kind of throws you off a little. It does. It does. That's what I'm saying. there's mo- there's moments where I get pissed. You know, I know y'all hear me because I mean I'm kind of expressive at all times. I, I don't know how they could overall fix the issue, but I just to me when I play, that's how I feel about the aim assist. And it's the same with snapping. Like when you go to snap, like when you go down the scope, there is no aim assist. <laughs> but so like, but the hip fire, the aim assist can be weird sometimes. It, it's there, but like, right, vaguely. <clears throat> well, the easiest way to fix it would be um, they need to come out. They need to release a statement that actually gives how many meters away you are from an enemy to where the the aim assist actually starts taking effect. And they need to, if they're going to have different guns that have different aim assist variables, then they need to release that information as well, right? Also, yeah. also with the same thing, it's like you should be able to go in and you should be able to customize your aim assist for hip firing and also for ADSing because yeah. it, it's two completely different things. So to me, the aim assist whenever you're ADSing should be stronger than when you're hip firing because you're going to be more accurate and it should actually help. So they should give a base value for all of the weapons at one time as to where the hip fire aim assist is actually going to start to help you. And you're actually going to notice it. And then how, um, how far it is whenever you're ADSing. Well, before I don't remember which season, like it was, this was recent, but like, you remember when they did like the update and like all of our stuff reset? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before that update, me, they had a thing where I could choose how strong the aim assist was. It can go from zero to 50 to 100%. You know, obviously it was like a, a graph bar. Yeah. But when that update happened, it's no lo- it's not even an option to have I'm aim assist. Take that out. I don't know if they took it out. Huh. Most likely they just made it where all the aim assist is all the same. So nobody can adjust the aim assist. Yeah, but... <laughs> But that's the thing, though. Pe- people are on different skill levels. People have different sensitivities within the game. Like, if you're going to take that, the ability to do aim assist, like control the aim assist in the game, then you need to c- take away the sensitivity for everybody. Because yeah. it's basically the, it's another Same. sensitivity setting. Yeah. So it's like you wouldn't take the sensitivity slider out of the game because people play on different s- sensitivities there. Why take, wow. the sl- why take the slider out for the aim assist? I don't know. I mean, because if you're playing the game and you've got the aim assist cranked all the way up, in a lot of situations, it's gonna it's gonna hurt you more than it's gonna help you. Because Absolutely. you're yeah, because you're not gonna be able to swing around the way that you need to. If you've got a group of four people pushing you, and two of them are at one shot and two of them are at half health, then if you've got life drain, then it makes sense to take out the people that are one shot so that you can get that health back if they're all shooting at you if that aim assist is cranked all the way up you're going to be shooting whoever you fucking swivel over to first yeah (laughs) like zoom in on yeah yeah (laughs) so um next up again personal twitter account do you like the tire or tier whatever you call it oh i saw this i voted on it and the poll was yes or no, bring back two tap. So the the whole reason that I brought this topic up is not for the actual poll itself, because I, I understand the poll and it makes sense. But when you're giving in the next update that's coming out in like a day or two, if you're giving fixer replenish so that whenever he downs someone, he gets his bullet back. Why are you releasing the poll for that before the update goes live? That makes absolutely no sense. Let the update go live and then make the poll and say, hey, do you like Fixer now whenever he has Replenish? Or did you like Fixer whenever he had the two-shot sniper rifle without the Replenish? 
Why are you releasing the poll now? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I need to try them to let you know. Exactly. And that's one of the things like in the update. Oh, they're real proud. Of, well, well, the community asked and we delivered it. And we're going to ask the community what they thought about it, even though the majority <laughs> of the community hasn't even got to use it yet. We're real proud of that one. Because we're not console the, players can't even get on fucking PTS, dude. Exactly. And they're asking people what they freaking think. Because we're not what, considered what, part of the community. How much of their player base is on console? I would a say lot. I would say PC, 75 right? to 80%, if not more. Exactly. So those people can't even join in on the fucking conversation. Yeah. That's why this right here has 870 votes compared to something like the Time to Kill where it had, what, 2,000 votes? Something like mm-hmm. that? Oh, my God. Yeah. How are you supposed to comment on this and actually give your uh, opinion on it whenever you don't know? There's a lot of good comments there. Yes, a I lot of people. Them, yeah, yeah. People are saying there's no way most of you want the two tap back, Scott. Yeah. There is no way you're thinking of bringing the two tap on that gun. Stop adding stuff into the game that is godlike OP and then becomes useless when it gets balanced. That basically means it shouldn't have been added into the game anyway. Preach, brother. Well, that one guy said he's getting replenished next patch. Bringing back the two tap, would it be the play? Yeah, yeah. He's so like. like they're they're trying why to did he ask this question yeah they're trying to address <laughs> they're trying to address the wrong issues at the or the right issues at the wrong time yeah it, it what was it, this weeks ago yeah well yes exactly this should have came out before the switchblade update and the pts came out or after the switchblade update went live across all platforms why are you releasing it on fucking july the second last thing that i wanted to hit on here Kramar, I don't know if you guys know about Kramar. Um, Kramar is a rogue company news and leaks Twitter page. This dude is legit. I've talked to him in uh, DMs. I've DM'd him, you know, asked for them digits. Not for real. But I have DM'd him and I was like, hey, man, you know, Kramar's got everything. He's got everything. He's doing the Lord's work. Yeah, he's the one that's doing the data mining for all the updates that come out into the game. He's releasing all this information ahead of time. With He's the one releasing the voice lines, the possible way that some of the characters are going to look, you know, what playlists are being added into the game. What's the kids. Being, yeah, every, he releases all the information. He's doing everything, and he is he's, he's the bomb. I, that's all I'm going to say. He's the bomb diggity. So he released this thing here on July the 1st that said at Verizon has published an article in their app in which they offer a free weapon wrap key and users who claim and redeem it should receive priority on the upcoming rogue company mobile beta. There are no official announcements yet. And then below that, he said the whole campaign is a Verizon up thing. So you need a smartphone with the my Verizon app. You also must be 18 or 18 plus and are a resident of the United States. So, yeah, sure. so he posted this on July the 1st. I went on there today. I, you know, got my code. I opted into it, uh, got the weapon skin and all that kind of stuff, which is awesome. The main thing here is, and a lot of people's been doing videos. I've got a video coming up this week about it, but rogue company mobile. What does, mm. what is that? What is that going to be? That sounds- I don't know. Horrible, man. I don't. Know. I just want to know why we need it. Well, they can't even. They can't even get the the PC and the console versions. Yeah, let's figure check. this one out first. Let's fucking release a mobile. Let's fucking do it, guys. It's gonna crash probably as soon as they open that bitch. Well, th- this is my my outlook on it. I understand why they're releasing a mobile version of the game, whether it's going to be the the game that we have now or a different version of the game, because. You're going to be able to drum up a lot of interest because there's tons and tons and tons and tons of people that play the game, play mobile games, right? A lot of kids. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be able to drum up a lot of interest in the game that way. You're also going to be able to probably be featured on something like a Verizon wireless commercial or something like that to where it shows this game being played by someone on possibly a new phone or something like that. So from a marketing standpoint, it makes 100% sense. If if it's going to be a completely different game altogether, then that makes 100% sense. Yeah. If it's going to be the same game and it's going to be people playing with console and PC people, 
Mm-hmm. Then that is a terrible idea. Yeah. Do you want to queue up with a rando, play it on his phone? No. No. Nope. Not at all. I don't want to be playing with someone that's playing on the bus and that has mm-hmm. to close the game out so that they can get off the bus, you know, or someone that's yeah, driving. Leaves. Yeah. Someone that's in a vehicle that's, go, you know, going on a trip yeah. and, oh, we hit a dead spot. Sorry, yeah. team. Don't worry. Backfill. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now there's a bot in the game. It's okay. Yeah. I think that this is a huge misstep. Like, if they're going to release something that's like uh, campaign related, where you get um, backstory for some of the rogues, and that's not going to be heavily multiplayer, then yeah, that makes sense. If you want to do a BR, then do it on mobile so that the people that want to play it, they can get on there and play the BR experience on their phone if they want to. But I don't think that we we already have enough of a problem with being paired with inexperienced players, players that leave, players that just jump off the map, players that try to kill you. Why do you want to add another level of frustration to the game? Yeah. I don't get it. And he's the one that leaked that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I went on the Verizon app today and I found it. I saw it. I claimed it the whole nine yards and I've got the skin. I've got the weapon skin. And of course, when the game comes out on mobile, I'm going to download the beta. For sure. I'm going to try it out and see what's going on with it. Possibly do some screen capture of it, you know, and, Uh and see what, what's going on with it. And I'm not trying to be closed minded on this, but at the same time, there's so many good things that you could actually do on a mobile version of rogue company that would actually add to the game. You know, it'd be cool if, uh, if it was a different style of game and you could log on there and you could collect rewards and stuff for your actual account on PC or console. Yeah. Uh, kind of like Paladins, they had they had a MOBA version of Paladins on the phone. You logged on there, it was like 4v4, it was a one-lane MOBA. You got to pick some of the Paladins characters, you unlock stuff for uh, your main account on Paladins. That made sense. Completely different game, had you know had the same characters, the, the characters had the same movesets and stuff of their abilities and whatnot, but it was not a first-person, you know, arena-style shooter like that. So I don't know what 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 do you guys that like what would be a good genre if they were going to do put something on on the phone what would be a good genre of game that could take all of the rogue company characters and drop them into it and it would feel fun and rewarding I like the idea of an RPG because we've been complaining about getting not just we the community and, and Hall's been complaining about getting more lore mm-hmm. and this would be a great way to get some more lore into it yeah. Yeah, I set like it up that. where you cool. where you release um, you know different campaigns like say you know you release it the first one's Ronin, second one's Dima, work your way through it to kind of show maybe some backstory and what's leading up to what's happening now. Yeah, I think that that's a great idea. And think about it like they if they could do their content drops. Uh, as character drops, right? So mm-hmm. when it first comes out, like you said, you get Rona, you get Dima, uh, maybe you get Saint or somebody like that. You get like three or four characters at the beginning. You play through their story. You get the information that you get for those characters, and it actually unlocks like specific skins or weapon wraps for that rogue that only that rogue can use, kind of like their emotes that you get for the mastery thing. Yeah. yeah. It's not hard to get shit. Yeah. I mean, it needs to feed into itself. Whatever they're doing with it, it needs to feed into itself. It would be, you would get more people willing to play it, especially yeah. if it feeds into the major game, because you might get people that just love the mobile game that's like, well, i got to give the console game a shot, or PC game a shot. And you've, then you've got people on PC and console that's like, man, I really want that fucking skin, so i gotta, I got to play the mobile game. Yeah. And that's what you... They got to... They gotta, release an ecosystem that's self-sufficient yeah if you'll notice man when you see a lot of the mobile gamers um i didn't even really know that was a big thing yeah like there's championships and you know uh, a lot of them they're overseas yeah like in places where people may not have access to a computer yeah foreign markets or a console yeah yeah it's really big there well but you know let all them play together there you know (laughs) yeah so, what do you think, Justin? If, cool. if there was a, a genre that you would drop the Rogue Company cast into, what would it be? I, I, I'm clueless on this. Like, 
Honestly, I wouldn't even know where to begin. I like Corey's idea. I think Corey's idea is really good. With like, I'd PG. play that. Because, dude, for real, there's the whole, like, not having a story is frustrating. Yeah. But they always, I'm they always tease, available they, to hire to write stories, by the way. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> they tease, like, all these people and, like, where they're from and stuff, and then nothing. Yeah. Like, Mag being the whole just. A car thing like that was so huge, and then there's just like supposedly that's like the rival to the rogues, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, but then they just never go anything else with it. So I'm just like, yeah. I don't understand. Like, what is I need the to know more about even, it. What's the point of even showing it? Yeah, yeah. It's, well, I mean, and again, Corey's idea like sh- grants that, but like, why is it not already in the game? Like, why is that not like, yo. Yeah. From day one, so, why from day, that figured well, out? why is that not already like? Why are they even like having these characters have back stories if they're not even gonna introduce the story? Well, I think <clears throat> at the end of the day, all that comes down to is money, because, uh, you know the 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 list of characters that we got when the game launched, we can all assume that those are rogues. They have all these other factions going on, like uh. You know, Jackal and Just a Car and all this kind of stuff. So you would have to hire a team of writers to give each specific rogue a backstory, and then intertwine all of their stories together into the into the organization. And then once they start introducing outside uh, characters that are not within the rogues themselves, like Mac, then you have to intertwine them into the story, give their backstory and their motivations as to what why they're doing what they're doing. And instead, w- oh, go ahead. I I'm sorry. I would just assume that they have an outline of what they want this to be. Yeah, I mean, you would ha- you would think that they would somewhere. It might be in a drawer in fucking Gandhi's basement, but yeah. So, I mean, you want us to be in the world? Why get the pe- get the, the, the people world. who have already written that down. Who the developers, the design, whoever has decided to do this, just keep writing, bro. It'll yeah. pay off. And if yeah. you don't want to write, I guarantee you, you can find good people, wink, wink me, uh, that's really cheap to write stories. Yeah. Be- yeah because there's, you've got a foundation yeah. and a world to play within. It, I, it'd be easy, in my opinion. It, ju- it, it just seems like an easy thing to do. Yeah. Uh, even if it's like uh, digital comics that you release on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, a page, yeah, six you, little panels. Yeah, you could do a four or six panel story and get a general idea of the character, what they've done, and where they're going and why they're there. And I'm telling you, I'd eat. I would eat that shit up. Yeah, it would be. Uh, it would be very easy to do. And yeah, if you've already got everything outlined, then all you need is a couple of creative bodies to go in there and elaborate on the, you know, on the bullet points. That's it. I just hire one full time writer. Yeah. Any dude, any dude who's got any kind of of experience writing, and I, I guarantee you, they can flush something out that would satisfy all of us. Yeah, exactly. And and, and if you, if you incorporate that into your mobile game, then then bam, I know you've got probably four dudes right here who will have the mobile game. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. So we'll we'll see what happens with the mobile game when it comes out. I, they said that the code uh, and the Verizon Up thing was happening until July the 31st. I'm assuming that the mobile beta is probably going to launch around the same time that Season 3 comes out, which is, you know, in, according to the uh, Battle Pass, it's about 36 days from today. They're, they're fixing to do the Switchblade update, which is supposed to be the mid-season update. We've the seasons are 90 days long, so it's way, you know, way over that mid season 15 days late on that. Yeah, unless they're gonna unofficially extend everything out, uh, for season three, that may may be the case. And hey, if you need to extend it out, everybody's gonna be okay with it as long as we get the best amount of content that we can get out of it. Exactly. Extend it for two weeks for all the fuck I care. As long as that that update's going to be awesome. Yes, one hundred and ten. Well, make make the battle pass great. Make everything great. Give us a theme, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. We'll be good. 
All right, so let's go ahead and head on over to the community side of things. First up, we got a very, very, very interesting tweet from Captain Chewy at Chewy Captain, and he says to all the streamers and players that want to bash Rogue Company 24-7 but want to stream the game for content and still play the game, you are the real problem. If it is so bad, why do you still stream or play it? You are not as important as you think you are. Get off your high horse. Preach. And then some, like, yeah. there's another image in here, and I don't know if this uh-huh. has any relation to it whatsoever. I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at this loading screen, and I don't know if there's any relation as to the people that are actually in this. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. got to be some connection, right? Uh-huh. I don't, I don't know what it could be, but. We're not pointing any fingers. Yeah. Maybe not give out a list of demands. So let's uh, let's go over here to our new our first topic here. So our first topic comes from Escape from LAX. If you're still in there, I feel for you, bro. Uh, new assist nerf will only work to harm the end game economy. As time goes on, cash totals are being lowered considerably. First assists were 1K, then 500, and now 250. All because some characters like Talon can farm assist easier. If everyone's assist dollars are nerfed, that's not really fixing the problem with farming assists, is it? Talon will still have an enormous amount of them. Not to mention, everything is constantly getting more expensive. Stems, padded, are the newest to get the increase in cost. We need things to start coming... We need things to start to come down in price as a result, or everyone's kit will be tougher to get. That's not fun. Playing well to buy most of what you want is going to be even harder now. So I think that this guy brings up a really good point. I mean, when they were talking about nerfing the assist bonus uh, that you actually got in game because of characters like Talon or Seeker that could reveal someone and still get an assist off of it, I'm sitting here watching this thinking like, So it's not the actual value of the assist that's the problem. It's the fact that certain people can get money off of an assist for revealing someone. Change that. That sounds to me like the simplest solution to the problem. You should make assists consistent across the rogues. Yes, and you should make it to where if a character is revealed by any means, whether it's a Dallas reveal, whether it's a Phantom reveal, whether it's a Seeker or a Talon reveal, in my opinion, they should not get any of the assist credit for that unless they actually put some damage into that person. Yeah, that's what it should be for is damage. Yeah. So instead of fixing the problem, they took the longest road humanly possible and we get a very good comment on the situation here saying that it's going to hurt everything and it is going to hurt everything because in a game of demolition you at most can only get four downs per round yeah well yeah so (laughs) with that being said you know like like you're losing so much because you're playing demolition as far as the economies involved now, if they wanted to do this in like Strikeout or King of the Hill, it makes sense because you're respawning and you're constantly shooting people. People are constantly getting down. But in Demolition specifically, the most that you can get is four downs. The most that you can get is four assists. It balances itself. If you take away... If they get the, back up, you can get some more downs. Yes. Yeah. Right? And another thing is, I, I need the assist, man, because sometimes I play with people that just tend to kill everybody. And I'm trying to pop some shots, you know. I need some shekels. Yeah, you know right. What I'm saying? Yeah. The money <laughs> issue. The money's gonna be horrible for demolition for sure. Yeah. And <laughs> at least keep demolition the same with assists, because like, I mean, again, it's all about like your life. Yeah. If well, you're dead, like right, you start out, you're not gonna make any money. No assists. No fucking nothing. The only thing you're gonna win is if your team somehow manages to pull it off. Yeah, and and it's like, we'll get rid of the assist values for the people that are revealed and just be done with it. Yes. Yeah. That's all like, you got to do. That's a line of code. Across the board. Yeah. Make For there to be an assist, make make the person have done damage to the road that you just downed. Not because... And they get an assist it for it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not because they, they were revealed by them or it has to be they've done damage to them and you, you finish them off. 
I didn't even know they got money for that. I didn't. Yeah, know that doesn't did. make sense. I mean, I didn't even well, know because. That. Like, but then again, we don't play all work. fucking cheesy all the time, so we don't look for those types. Yeah, we're not of, farming it. Yeah, dude. So next up, we've got a, uh, a post here from Grouchy Cheek eight four two zero. I joined the dark side today. I got pissed and full of rage and did what everyone else does. I closed the game out and went to the bathroom. I signed back in about five minutes later and played the next game. A couple of games later, I got disgusted again and disconnected again. No penalty for no penalty for me, so I was soon playing another one. In total, I left five different games and never got a penalty. Best of all, I feel no remorse or guilt whatsoever as I'm just doing to others what has been done to me, so it's all good. Don't worry. If I'm in your game and leave after the next update, I will be replaced with a bot so your team won't suffer. And when I do finally get that penalty, I'll just come back later or the next day and do it all again. Come join me. The dark side is empowering. And it's where all the cool kids are. This dude trolling? I don't this, know. This kind of sounds like trolling. This is why like we need fun of it. a block feature. Yeah. <laughs> well... If you ask certain people within the Rogue Company community, they only want a block feature for people that spam invites because there's not a do not disturb feature. Wait, there, there is a do not disturb feature in the game. Shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess that throws that comment completely out the window then, doesn't it? So yeah, I agree. Like, There should be a block feature for things like this in the game to where if someone is habitually leaving the game whether this guy's trolling or not it's still a good it's still a good topic to a hit point because if he's trolling you know yeah yeah oh it's a great point yeah and, and at the end of the day like if if this dude is being real and he didn't get any kind of penalties for leaving the game and he jumped right back in and he just doesn't give a fuck anymore then there's a problem with the core game itself yeah well they, they, first off they're lying when they're saying that they're looking in, you know, they're talking about, you know, penalizing people, you know, and stuff like that and trying to like get that system up and running. Yeah. So like, where the fuck is that system? Yeah, exactly. Well, it happens all the time where we'll be playing a match and it'll be on the last round. By the time we hit the score screen, the guy's already in queue again. Yeah. Like, so where's his penalty at? Yeah. And this is a, go ahead. I just, I don't get, how you couldn't give someone a penalty in any game where it's team based like that that I've ever played? If you leave, it's like minimum thirty minutes. Yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, even in like in like MMOs, if you get into an instance with someone, like you know, a group thing, and you leave that group, you can't do it again for thirty minutes minimum. Now, I'm with this one, man. Remember this: if they keep doing it, you know, they get warnings. It's like you keep leaving matches, man. It's like, all right, we're gonna start taking your reputation. Yeah, you're I'm losing points. Yeah, I'm with it. That'll put a stop to it. We're, yeah, real. So, like, what happens when I get to zero? You're going negative. <laughs> yeah, make a new account. You now owe us reputation. Yeah, and it should tank whatever type of matchmaking system that they have in it. Like, put you, you in there with people that leave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like put the cheaters with the cheaters and put the leavers with the leavers. And, yeah. and like he said in the post, it doesn't matter because in the next update, it's going to be backfilled with a bot. So yeah, all the people that are currently leaving the games have even more or less of a reason to feel any type of remorse or guilt about it because no, it's fine. They're going to get backfilled with a bot. They'll either win or they'll lose, but that's, that's it. Or you could just stick around and get better. Not get pissed. Dude. How many times have we been playing games where we've got completely fucking pissed off? Oh, yeah. And we and we've we suffered through it. There are games oh, yeah. where it's like fuck this. This is there's something weird going on. Let's get out of this game. Let's go ahead and surrender. Get into the next game and all this stuff. But like we've been in games where it, we've been getting our ass whooped and been able to bring it back. Nobody's yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. And we've had people leave and then bring it and then we bring it back. Just three of us. Like yeah. Like so. should have stuck around, dude. Yeah. Right. So I think that we're going to probably see more people actually leaving the game whenever the bots get introduced, especially when they're not addressing any type of penalties or anything like that. It's like, oh, I got a deserter ban for 30 minutes. Well, I'm going to go fucking take a shit and like 
scroll on fucking Twitter until it's over with. Like, I don't care. It don't matter. Well, now you won't even know when they leave. They'll just be running into the wall. Yeah. And they won't answer you. Yeah. It's like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. Exactly. He was talking a minute ago. Yes. It should tell you if it's on your team, dude, it should tell you if it's a bot. So you just so you know, like, you know, let's not rely on this guy too much. Yeah. So next up, we have a post from my poop my way. And he says demolition is the next mode that needs to be scrapped after extraction. When I saw this headline, I was like, what the fuck? And then I actually started reading it. And he said, and replaced by demolition 2.0. A big reason why Rogue Company is not as popular as it should be is because it is known as a Counter-Strike wannabe game with third-person peeking, which is partially true thanks to the demolition mode. It's a mode with the old exact same Counter-Strike formula that that worked before in first person, but once brought to the third person, it frustrated many potential players. This means if the devs want a mode like this in the game, it needs to be reworked. Welcome to Demolition 2.0. It's 6v6, single life. Both teams have their own bomb. The goal is to bomb the enemy team's base before they bomb yours, so you have to attack and defend at the same time. What other games? What other game makes you attack and defend at the same time? Chess, the OG of competitive games. This is Rogue Company's version of a chess game. Since the rogues have different abilities, they are already like chess pieces anyway. No need for taking turns to attack anymore in a slow-paced old formula. We need to take it to the next level. Counter-Strike clone? No. Counter-Strike 2.0. This is how the devs should be thinking. With upgraded Strikeout and King of the Hill incoming, Demolition needs a facelift badly into something new, fresh, and exciting, or it will get left in the dust. I second this. It's a really good idea, right? It's a great idea. Yeah. It really shakes up the the old formula. Yes. And it makes it it ma- it makes it harder because some people wait for the attack or wait for the defense. They're like, "Okay, if we can just get you know, two in in the attack, then when we get on defense, too, we're going to run a fucking train on them." Because yeah. it's that's how the, but if you have to do both at the same time, they can't play like that. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can't have people doing these fucking crazy flank all the way around you bullshit because you'll have people hanging in the back waiting. Like it, it, it's so a whole, it's a whole confusion. different positioning thing. Yeah. You know, there'd be more confusion. It would definitely be like a chess game. And I mean, the rogues do have different abilities that would grant them like different chess pieces. I don't know about the six v six. Then we just we got to find two more players. I ain't telling you. Well, they're just not gonna let them oh, kill with us. Yeah, which makes hey, sense. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we were all excited about. Is like, man, we can actually get some of our because you know we have to like, well, I'll tag and we, you know, yeah, let yeah. you know, and it's like it would be nice if we could play with everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then it's like, oh, I and see, I didn't even know that until you read that earlier, and I'm like, what? Yeah, I didn't either. What? what? Yeah. And and, and at, at the end of the day, I, <laughs> at the end of the day, I think that this guy makes a really good point because, yeah, it like demolition is something that's been done for years and years and years at this point. And I do enjoy playing that style of game where you do have one life. There is an objective. Um, but also like the idea of shaking it up and making it completely different. And I think that that guy might be onto something now. You could even take it further and rework it that much more to where like there is a, you know, there's there's instead of defending and attacking where you you spawn into the game and then that's where they're going to plant the bomb at. You could have two centralized locations on the map where you can rotate your team to and you can go there and plant the bomb and the enemy team can either rotate into you to try to plant at that same site or they can plant at the other site because think about it how intense would it be if you take a map like uh, vice for example and let's say that one of the plant sites is on the far right in the donut shop and then the other plant site is on the far left in the alley in that area and then one team rotates and they plant donut shop. One team rotates and they plant in the alley. So now it's you've get crazy. Yes. Yeah, so now you've got to rotate into the other team and try to yeah. defuse the bomb while they're doing the same thing to you. Yeah. Mm. And hope their lancer doesn't sneak over and get your bomb. So somebody's got to watch it. Yes, exactly. 
that would like makes for such intense games. And it yes, would be. And a 6v6 version of that to where, like, instead of actually playing from north to south, you're actually playing from east to west on the map, but you spawn in on north to south. That would be a completely different way of doing it. And I think that that would be insane. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't really have to rework the demolition maps either. You just have to throw a bomb to the other side as well. Yeah. And maybe uh, move a little bit of cover around here and there. But Well, that could be done on almost every map. Yeah, exactly. Whether you're going to change demolition or not, it needs to be done. Yeah. Um, that so little fucking box in that little corner on that... Oh God, what's that goddamn one? You know what I'm talking about? It, where it, you come around the left side, and there's that area that you go into, and there's that, that one tall box that you go into on the plant side that you could stand there, and no matter where where they're shooting you from, you're shot. every fucking time. Oh, every fucking uh, time. On Icarus, yeah. yeah Icarus. That little room. Every time. Yeah. It, but it, that box seems like it's going to be good cover. Seems like it. Yeah. It is horrible. It's like yeah. they can't see me, right? But they can shoot over it. But I, th this is the kind of people that like th one of the main reasons why that I wanted to bring the community side into the podcast is because you have amazing ideas out there that's put into the ether on something like this. And they could take this idea, they could extrapolate it, they could test it, they could release a limited time mode version of it to see how it plays, they could release it on PTSs to see what the community feedback on it was, they could put it in public game and have it its own exclusive playlist and actually get player feedback on it to make it that much better. I don't think yep. that that will ever happen, ever, but this is the things that's going to make your game like have longevity. Is is shaking yeah. it up a little bit. But let me ask you: Do you get rid of classic demolition? Well, I think that if the if the maps were balanced enough, if the rogues were balanced enough, and they actually increased it to either five v five or six v six, then yes, by all means, you could actually get rid of demolition and you could relabel maybe make it, it as a something limited else. Time thing, maybe. Well, I mean, they you could play it if you want to, but yeah. Well, they they could start out with that, but I think that if they introduced a really good um, single life mode into the game because we've only had extract or uh, yeah extraction and demolition. I think those are the only two. Well, wingman, but I'm not counting that. So there's mm -hmm. only been two single life modes put into the game. Your main game mode, or what you said was your main game mode, and the first limited time mode that you made. Everything else is respawn. I think it's okay to take some chances on some limited time modes and see how it plays out. And if the community receives it well enough, and they won't this change to happen and actually have a vote in rogue company in the game to see what you like about it, what you dislike about it. And if you want it swapped out with demolition, then they could certainly do that. Yeah. That, I really like the two bombs. Yeah. I mean, I think that cool. that would, and imagine the fucking fight. If both of your teams are rotating into the same plant site and it's a six V six and a single oh, life, it's going to be balls crazy, dude. Yeah. So sounds fun. Yeah, it does, right? So our next post here is from Intelligent Leak 8909 Leak L E E K. Do we think there'll ever be enough characters slash lore to get a factions versus game mode? I'm wondering if we will ever have enough characters to have a mode where you can only play as the faction you select. For example, Justicar, Jackal, Rogues. Especially once we get more lore. It may be on it may be on to constantly be killing characters you're supposed to be teamed up with. Would anyone else even be interested in a game mode like this? I really like that idea. If they can get enough of each faction, it'd be cool to maybe have like a a limited time mode where you have four of the rogues, four of the Justicars, and four of the Jackals. Yes. All fighting each other for one central Ooh. point or something. Yeah. That would be fucking nutty. Yeah. Well, then they'll have to bump up the numbers on just a car in jackal. And that would also jackal, for sure. That that would also limit your choices on a team, you know. Yeah. yeah. Which I do kind of enjoy that thought too, because you you'd have to play differently depending on on who you can choose. Yeah. Exactly. Whenever I read that, here's what I was thinking though. You know how Ultimate Alliance. Y'all, you guys play Ultimate Alliance, the old Marvel yeah. games. Yeah, I did. 
Okay. So in Ultimate Alliance, if you know you had four characters that were that you played with at one time, and if you assembled a certain group of characters, then it would actually give the those characters bonuses, right? Mm-hmm. So if you picked all Fantastic Four, then you would get a certain bonus to something. If you picked all X Men, you would get a certain bonus. If you picked oh, that'd be cool. the Defenders, you got a certain certain bonus you know you had to pick these specific characters it would be really really cool if and i'm not saying like give bonuses within the game to where it's like you take less damage you do more damage and stuff like that but it would be really cool if it if they had it to where if you picked a certain you know certain characters to play against in a regular match then it gave you something like a bonus like maybe exclusive skins right so the you can't own the skins but like if you pair up with a full cast of of just a car then you have their official just a car um you know outfits and that's the only way to play with those with those characters with those skins on is to have a full team of just a car and then select you know after you pick your rogues and everything hey do you want to play with your normal skin or do you want to play with the just a car exclusive skin well i want to play with the just a car exclusive skin because that's the only way to play with that skin yeah. squad yeah and then it, it applies mm-hmm. it to not only your character, but also to your weapons and everything like that. And make it something that's a little bit more exclusive because you, you have to think that as they release more characters, then you're going to get a just a car uh, support. You're going to get a just a car breacher. You're going to get a just a car um, duelist. You're going to get, you know, all these different roles. So if you pick a full on just a car crew that are able to fill all of those roles, then why not give them something a little bonus to the team like that. I think it would be cool lore wise if they did something like that for a mid season event where it's its own separate playlist to where it was like, you know, it'd be cool. Like the rogue company the rogues are trying to escape from Justicar and this is like a small encounter that they had with the Justicar. And it only takes place on like one or two maps and it could be something uh like a unique game mode or something like that. And you could tell a story through it. You know, as the rogues you have to like activate this doorway while fighting your you know, fighting the just car off. And then once that door is open, you move into the next area and you're still fighting the just car off or something like that to give it a little bit more of a cinematic value while you're playing it. So I like the, it. That, that's where my head went whenever I read that. I was like, it would be really cool if they gave you some type of little something if everybody grouped up together as that certain faction. But you could also have faction wars. I mean, they're doing work on this Reddit page. I know, right? I hope they're coming on here and reading yeah, this shit. Really I mean, really it's like they're doing your job for you, kind of. I mean, yeah, right. So the next one is by Dwindle Mix Subtleton. Dwindle Mix Subtleton. Can we give Dima EMP reveals and an unpopular opinion on Switchblade's melee weapon? Um, the main reason that I brought this up was the Dima stuff. I heard recently that Dima is underplayed. And has a low win rate. If Stalker and Mamba Buff doesn't put him back into the meta, maybe allowing his EMP grenade to reveal enemies hit would. On top of him already being undervalued, in my opinion, that Switchblade is going to need a slight nerf on release, I would hate to see my man's Dima get the Saint treatment when Dahlia was released, or how Phantom was treated when Fixer first dropped. I don't think it would be as extreme, but we'll see. I think EMP grenade reveals would make him nice. Side note, I've seen a couple of people say that the bat doesn't work well with Switchblade's kit slash design. Shorty can get speed boosts off of flash grenade throws and gives off big Harley Harley Quinn vibes. Big ups to the designers for the bat. I think it's a perfect melee weapon for her, especially with the MX uh, the MLX suffering close range engagements. Uh, like I said, the main reason. Yeah, right. The main reason I wanted to bring this up was the EMP reveals. So they reworked Dima's passive ability to where now whenever he hits someone with a grenade or any type of explosive, it reveals them for a short duration as opposed to revealing them when they go down. I don't see why the EMP shouldn't be involved in this. Yeah, it sh- it should be just automatically part of it. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it like... Explodes. Yeah, it explodes. It stops them from using their ability. And you only have one grenade with Dima. Then you have his Merv launcher, which if you hit a couple of them with it, then you get a reveal off of it, which is great. But you get two EMPs. And a lot of people undervalue the EMPs. I know that they're good in a lot of situations, but the majority of the situations is they're 
they're not really worth picking up over some of his perks and his uh, weapon upgrades and things like that. If you give the EMP the ability to reveal with Dima, then people yeah, are going to yeah, people yeah. are going to get it over the frag grenade. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah, because I, I mean, two birds and one stone. Yeah, I think activating the, their gadgets and a reveal. Yeah, and I, I don't know why that they didn't add that into it. I understand that it was something that was meant to be explosive. They gave him resupply so that you know whenever he uh, downs and kills someone, then he could actually get his grenade back. But like. If you're playing Demolition, which is supposed to be your main game mode, then how often are you actually getting that second or third reveal? Exactly. You're not. Yeah. It's sad to hear that Dima's underplayed, though, because, I mean, Dima's one of my favorites. He's my most yeah, played character. That. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Dima's, you know, like, he's one of my highest, like, masteries, too. Like, when I, I go mean, play, he's the he's only like, character Trav plays. Yeah, Travis loves him. So again, just the the fact that the community themselves don't play Dima, be, I mean, that's crazy. Come on, guys, play Dima. A lot of Dima's. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I feel like I fight a lot of Dima's. Yeah, I don't know where he's getting that info. Well, he got that information from the Switchblade live stream because they said in the Switchblade live stream that Dima was underperforming. So that's oh, why well, that makes it true. Yeah. So that's why the <laughs> that's why they were giving him stalker and taking away nimble hands or whatever it was, so that maybe he would have a more a higher play rate if they swap his perks and stuff out. And I don't really think it has anything to do with his perks. I think no. that I think the main reason that people don't like playing Dima is one of the reasons the launcher? that yes, yeah, that's one of the reasons that I don't like because it's so inconsistent. It is. And then, yeah, because like sometimes you can shoot that I, thing and it doesn't go where you aim. You can shoot that. And sometimes it'll be it'll hit the corner that you're like on. You know, obviously, you know, it's almost kind of like how Kestrel. Like sometimes, yeah, you I was just thinking, the, yeah, you don't come around the wall in time. Uh -huh. But like legit, like that thing will be pointing. You know, you have it pointing over there across the fucking way. Like, oh, that's gonna be where it hits. And then when you shoot it, it bounces off the wall right on top of you. Yeah. Or, I mean, again, even the tribe bursts themselves, when they land, May they really have no source of direction. Maybe because I've played them so much, but I've kind of figured out, depending on the angle and how high up on the wall I hit, how it's going to spread out. Yeah. Well, where, I mean, it's not it. always 100%, but I, I've kind of figured out where oh. to put it. My, my only issue with Dima is that I just feel like his passive is just not worth it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that if they if they gave him the EMP reveals, then that would put that passive up in a higher state. And yeah, and with what Justin's saying about the Merv launcher is, it feels like the hit detection for the Mer the actual Merv that comes out of it, like the the missile or whatever the fuck it is, the mortar mm. that shoots out. It feels like the hit box for it is way too large. And because of that, it's clipping on things that the trajectory of it isn't saying that it should clip on. Right. Okay. And I think that that is a, is a development issue. Like, they need to go in and lower oh, absolutely. the hitbox. Yeah, they need to lower the hitbox of it because you're not going to be shooting at it. You know, like, if you are able to shoot the Dima th shot as it's coming at you, then I'm going to give you a fucking standing ovation. Yeah. But, yeah, I've yeah. never seen it happen. I've seen some crazy no. shit. Yeah. So maybe lower the hit the hit box of it just enough to where it actually flies true to what the trajectory of the 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 bullet is actually telling you where it's going to go. I mean, we had that huge problem where you're behind cover, you pull it out, you aim up over the cover and it hits the cover and explodes and kills the whole team. Your whole yeah. team. Yeah. That's the hit detection of it. I like, think it is. Yeah, like it doesn't the yeah, it doesn't trigger correctly. Like, why is it triggering right there on the box when it says it's going to trigger over there? <laughs> yeah, that's a bug for sure. Yeah, and and it's been in the game so long. Like Corey said, he's he's learned how to play around it. Now, if I get on right now and I'm like, okay, I'm just playing Dima. By the end of the night, yeah, I'm gonna know how big the hitbox for it is. I'm yeah, gonna you know. Lock it in. Yeah, but like, let's say we get on tomorrow night. And for the next week, I don't play Dima, and then I get back on Dima like next Sunday. I got to relearn what that hitbox is on there. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like to pick Dima's my most played character by like four hours. So, right, but, 
He's got Ronan beat, and you know, we've been playing them since it fucking launched. Last one here. Uh, map voting. Any chance that devs take this on? So this kind of feeds back into what some of Gandhi's posts were on Twitter and whatnot. But uh, Mr. Uh, Technical Key 4465 said, as we continue to get new maps, the odds of randomly getting your favorite map only get smaller. On top of this, after playing for a couple of hours, certain maps tend to feel stale. To counter this, devs could let us vote for one of two or three randomly selected maps. They could set it up like the rogue banning system for ranked, so you could see what your team is voting for before everyone locks it in. What do y'all think? If we request it enough, will they consider it? I would want this so bad, because it revolves back to what we were talking about. Yeah, sounds yeah. great. Yeah, and, It just and, makes sense. It does. Because, and but why isn't that an option for us? Yeah, it, it really doesn't make any sense. I mean, because especially whenever you play demolition as the you know, the majority of the time, there's certain maps that you just do not want to fool with. And the community uh -huh. as a whole can agree that they do not want to mess with this map. Uh that's like in one of those posts I was reading through it while we were talking about it, they're taking Glacier out of ranked completely. <laughs> So if they're going to take Glacier out of ranked completely, then obviously that map is terrible and they need to either deactivate it for demolition and ranked, or they need to take it out of the, out of the game completely and rework the map and then re-release it at a later time. I need you to take it out. Yeah. And, and they could do that. And if we had a map voting system, then it could get to a point where we don't have to suffer through Glacier unless it's like, well, we haven't played this map in like six months. Y'all want to play this map real quick? Yeah, like, I heard they changed it. Let's yeah. check it out. Yeah, let's That would give them some usable data, too. Like, oh, it looks like 95% of the time yeah. people voted for any map over this map. Yeah. Remove it. Yeah. Fix it. Put yeah. it back. And they could they could do like polls or they could do something within the game itself or or on actually Rogue Company's Twitter page, the actual Twitter page, not a personal Twitter page, to where it's like you know we see the play rate of this map being a lot lower than the rest of them. What are a lot of the issues that you have with this map? And I guarantee you, you will get flooded with responses. Oh yeah. If you and ask, take the ones that you've got them like when twenty people say that this is an issue, go fix that issue. Yeah, go in there, look at the issue as a whole, play a couple of matches. Like they they have the ability to go in and let's take High Castle and Extraction for a moment, right? High Castle Extraction, every game mode for High Castle feels terrible. I, I'm beginning to hate that map as much as Glacier, if not more. But they could go in there and they could say, okay, we want the bomb plant site to be in this one place every single time. A lot of people are saying that there's an issue with this, uh, you know, the bomb being in this specific area. So let's get a bunch of the developers together. Let's run through this for like two hours and see what the issues with it are. And then if you can't figure out what the issues with it are with a development team with only one bomb site spawning into the match, then you're not doing your job correctly. Yeah. Just play it a few times. Yeah. Just and tell me. Like, oh. Yeah. This feels really bad. It feels really bad that one team has the illusion that they have advantage, when in reality, they have none of the advantage. Yeah. None of it. You don't have high ground. You can't properly protect against flanks. No, dude. You're fucked if it's in that one spot on extraction. Yeah. You better have a good Griffin on your team. That yeah. map in general just fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. It, so, like, uh, I would say that when we play that map with the teams that we play, and say we play Demolition, 90% uh, of the pushes from the other team are B. They they hardly ever push A. Yeah, yeah. that's a problem. And it, it, it is a problem because there's things that could be done, like moving the the site from the top there down to the bottom of the zip line even not even right at the bottom of the zip line but that little area down below that where the box is yeah where the extraction box is it it would give them plenty of sight to be able to defend it when they plant it and you know it it would at least give them more of a shot to go that side and people aren't just pushing B constantly it's always B <clears throat> There's just yeah. too much space there. 
Yeah. But, like, it, there's ground where you just can't go, and that's what makes it so and bad the of ba- a location. The back lanes on that motherfucker, right? They're yeah. Bad too. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. there's like three back lanes. How in the hell are you supposed to defend that? Exactly. In addition to the ones in front of you. Yeah. It's just a poorly designed it's map open. overall. Yeah. It's just yeah. The, the, the more I've played it, the more I've realized, like, it's just as bad as Glacier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the bomb stop for A is literally a tower. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you have to use, that's it. That's your cover, the tower. And that one piece of wall that they set up right along the zip line. I mean, I, I know we were. I, I went to a map thing, but I feel like we needed to hark on this map for a minute because it's got so yeah, many flaws. Flaws. Yeah, and and it circles back around to if we had the option to ban that map or not play it, then we would not have to worry about it every time. Just about yes. every time. I like there's situations where I'm like, you know what? I'll pick Glacier over that. For map. Sure. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> for yeah, sure, dude. Yeah. So this is episode two of broadcast. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Be sure to check us out on Twitter at Broadcast, or you can email us, Broadcast at gmail.com, if you have anything you want to contribute. Also, in the Discord, we do have a Broadcast contributions area, so if there's anything that you want us to talk about, please be sure to, to either send it to us, drop it in the Discord, send it to us on Twitter, anything that you want to do, that way that we can get it on the show. Also... Survey is coming up. We have a survey in the works right now. When the results come in, then we're going to use an entire broadcast to cover all the results from the survey. So please be sure to fill that out and spread it around and try to get as many people to fill it out so that we get as much data as we possibly can. So yeah, guys, thanks for listening to episode two of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast broadcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time, guys.